I love how the more we peel back the layers on Japanese Americana, the cooler it gets. Today's video is all about the Osaka Five, which represent five of some of the most important denim companies ever to be created in Japan. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do, and this video is an ongoing continuation of the series that I'm making about Japanese Americana. And last video for reference was all about why Japanese denim is the best in the world. Also, I noticed that some people were kind enough to correct my historical inaccuracies down in the comments, and if you have any information that I miss out on or I mistakenly say, feel free to leave it down in the comments. This is a community, and just like you, I'm learning these things for the first time, researching them, and if you want me to, I can add my sources in the description. Now, let's lay out some objectives for this video. The first and maybe most obvious objective is that by the end of this video, you should know who the Osaka Five are. Duh. <laughs> the second objective being understanding the significance of the Osaka Five during the 20th and 21st century. Man, let's Let's dive in. Who are the Osaka Five and what does it mean when someone asks that question? Well, in layman's terms, the Osaka Five are the five brands responsible for pioneering the look and feel for modern denim in Japan. The five brands include, and excuse my pronunciations on some of these Japanese founders, Studio de Artisan, founded by Shigeharu Tagaki, Denim with an E. Quick side note, I'm pronouncing it Denim with an E because I think that's how it's pronounced but if I'm wrong, leave a comment. It also could be Denim. I went to Amsterdam and there was a place called Tenu Denims, so it could be Denim, but I'm saying Denim, and if it makes you cringe, I'm sorry. Which is founded by Yoshiyuki Hayashi. Ebisu, which was founded by Hidehiko Yamane. Full Count, which was founded by Mikiharu Shujita. And lastly, Warehouse, which was founded by brothers Kenichi and Koji Shiotani. That was a mouthful, <laughs> especially for someone who's not a Japanese native speaker. <laughs> These five brands comprise what we know today as the legendary Osaka Five. The naming of this group comes from the fact that the genesis of these denim companies all come from a region in Japan that's more free thinking and is known as the city of Osaka. During the 20th century and still today, Osaka Japan has been recognized as one of the most multicultural cosmopolitan cities in Japan. And as you know, if you've watched my previous videos breaking down Japanese Americana, especially last week's video talking about Japanese denim, during the mid to late 20th century, there was a shift that occurred in American denim manufacturing companies that discarded some of the more detailed and interesting shuttle loom systems for more efficient and more cost-effective projectile loom systems. This shift in the production style of jeans is highly relevant because it's important to note that this shift took place during the mid 20th century and it affected both Japanese and American denim lovers alike. This shift helped motivate the individuals who thought it would be necessary to bring back quality and character designs to Japanese denim manufacturing. And some of those individuals are members of the Osaka Five. Let's look at each brand from the Osaka Five individually. Starting with the first member of the Osaka Five, Studio de Artisan was founded in 1979 by Shigeharu Tagaki with the hope to share the love he had for denim coming up in the 60s and 70s. During these decades, a lot of Japanese men fell in love with the quality of Levi's jeans being imported from America. The only problem with imports is that oftentimes demand exceeds supply and as a result, you have a shortage of people being able to acquire the items that they actually want and enjoy. So what do you do when you can't find products that you want, especially in the clothing industry? Well, Mr. Tagaki decided to make a version of his own. The most iconic jeans from Studio de Artisan come in the form of their, I believe it's do one or D O one or the artist on one or whatever the naming of it's D O dash one those jeans <laughs> the D O one or the do one or the do one is a straight leg selvage denim five pocket jean that combined European and American workwear features the next member of the Osaka five denim with an E was founded almost 10 years after studio the artisan by Yoshiyuki Hayashi and as a side 
cliff note, Denim was actually founded in the city of Kobe, which is still in the relative same region of Osaka, but it's something, if you're a history buff, you really know about. And it's just a little extra side detail that if you know, you know. The way Denim stood out compared to the other Osaka 5 members comes down to the fact that Denim prided itself on a clean cut looking jean. Denim also specialized in recreating iconic mid-century Levi's that were very difficult to come by in Japan in the 80s and 90s. They were also known for their quick fading and like I said, compared to the artisan, they had a very clean cut look. And looking back at this time period where Japanese denim companies were trying to recreate a lot of the mid-century Levi's designs, denim really stands out as a front runner of the Osaka 5 in terms of being the most accurate re-representation of the classic Levi's from the 50s and 60s. While the artisan was more experimental and some perceive them to be more free thinking and fun with their designs. Now, Evisu was founded in the 90s by the iconic Hidehiko Yamane. Hopefully I said that right. It's, it's a tough one for me. During the 90s, Mr. Yamane was a true figurehead in the Japanese denim community. And as a result of his creative gravitas, Evisu was one of the most adventurous companies in the Osaka 5 that played with both cuts and ventured beyond just denim. One of the most noteworthy aspects of Evisu is its involvement in hip hop culture. And this subject possibly deserves its very own video because the intersection between Japanese street culture and and hip hop culture and street wear and street fashion is really fascinating, especially if you look at the timeline from Ivy League fits to Japanese and workwear decor, Japanese Americana, and then you have street wear, sneakers and sneaker culture. It's fascinating, it's fascinating. I have to give a huge shout out to someone like Keezy who I watch on a regular basis and as someone who I feel like has introduced me to this genre of Japanese denim, Evisu and things of that sort. So shout out to him. He still rocks with him in 2022, which is incredible. I'm just a young pup trying to learn about it right now. <laughs> and I think it's so interesting now how the Osaka 5 were influenced by the traditional Levi's that were imported into the country. And you fast forward now, someone like Keezy is probably heavily inspired by Evisu and brands of that sort. And as a result, he started his own brand called Haven Court, which also emphasizes some of the design details that inspired him from the Osaka 5 and brands of that sort so it's like generationally the inspiration continues fashion always builds on top of each other and Keezy is a great example of that number four of the Osaka five is a brand called full count founded in 1992 by Mikiharu Shujita that one's tough too Mikiharu to Shujita <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. I need a Japanese lesson right here, boy. Miki Haru Tsujita. Funny enough, Mr. Tsujita was actually a colleague of Mr. Yamane's, the founder of Ebisu, and that just speaks to the level of love and passion and expertise he has in the industry. Now, Full Count's defining feature with their denim is their use of textiles. Full Count was the first to use soft, long fiber cotton from Zimbabwe. And what did that do? The idea expressed by Mr. Shujita is to quote, create jeans that feel so good, you don't wanna take them off until you go to bed. Which to me sounds like an incredibly awesome notion as comfort when it comes to styling is like one of the number one things that I look for when I go out to buy clothing. Full Count also focused on everyday life as opposed to creating garments specifically made for blue collar work. That's why their emphasis on comfort, their fibers and textiles they use is reflected in the quality and the feel of the denim that they made and make. That is their niche in the Osaka 5. And if you've noticed, as we've gone through each member of the Osaka 5, they all have different aspects that they bring to the table that make them unique and don't saturate the market with the exact same type of pair of jeans. Last but certainly not least, we have the brand Warehouse. Founded in 1995 by brothers Kenichi and Koji Shiotani. So the two brothers goals in creating Warehouse was less about recreating items of denim that they admired that were imported from the US, but more so infusing new ideas with the quality ideas that they did like from 
the previous designs that they were seeing in Japan. Their flagship model, the 1001XX Gene, was pivotal at putting their brand on the map. So their emphasis, their niche in the Osaka 5 is this infusion of the past and the present with their clothing and their denim. The 1001XX, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, either correct me if I'm wrong, or 1001XX jeans were really, really important for this brand in terms of establishing them as one of the members of the Osaka 5. Those are the famed Osaka 5, but in my research, I actually was able to find a few more denim brands that technically aren't a part of the Osaka 5, but deserve the recognition as being pioneers in Japanese denim in the 80s and 90s. Brands such as Samurai, The Flathead, Eternal, The Strike, Gold, and Pure Blue Japan. All right, let's recap everything really quickly. Now, when someone asks you who are the Osaka 5, you'll say they are the brands that revitalize Japanese denim manufacturing during the latter half of the 20th century. They include Studio de Artisan, Denim with an E, Evisu, Full Count, and Warehouse. Cool, we got the first objective down, we can put a check mark on it. Now let's talk about the second objective for this video. I'm gonna use a basketball analogy, so stay with me, okay? It can't be understated that the Osaka 5 are like what Michael Jordan was to the NBA in the 80s and 90s. The Osaka 5 breathed refreshing life into a denim scene in the 80s and 90s that made people love the game in a way that hasn't been seen before. Just like MJ did with the NBA. So when you think about their impact, just know it was a big one. And I think the passion that the Osaka 5 cultivated during the 80s and 90s and early 2000s has also bled into the culture scape and fashion that we see today, where you have individuals who absolutely love and live and breathe and die for Japanese Americana. You have those who feel that same way about sneakers or avant-garde. That kind of passion, I feel like really stems from this era where clothing became more than just utility, it became lifestyle, if that makes sense. I think some of my favorite retailers where I see this like devout passion for clothing come in the form of brands like 316, Blue and Green, Canoe Club, Stag Provisions, Olery, and so many others that I've had the opportunity to walk into and talk to owners, clerks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera that express a level of passion for clothing that a lot of people just don't understand if they aren't in it. So you should know who the Osaka 5 are, you should know that their significance is very, very large and is still felt today. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a comment about what point stood out to you. If I missed anything, feel free to correct me or add a little bit more context. This is an ongoing series, so if you enjoy this type of content, subscribe because I will be making more videos about Japanese Americana, Japanese streetwear, Japanese fashion, and the likes. Before we conclude, I want to ask you, what should I be talking about going forward? What would you be interested in hearing? I absolutely love making these kind of professorial, like in a classroom videos to you guys, so let me know down in the comments. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2022. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Abianto. Peace. Yo, what is good post vivid, man? I missed y'all, man. Hopefully y'all are doing okay. Y'all doing good? You know, here's a fist bump if you're not doing the best, man. You know, just fist bump right there. Bop. Appreciate you big time. Let's get another one. I'm going to keep it slow and steady for you. Bop. Thank you guys so, so much. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series, man. It's been really fun creating these videos and I'm um, getting a lot of good feedback from you guys. I, one point I want to hone in on is that, you know, life is pretty crazy right now. There's always something, right, PVV? If it's not one thing, it's another. That's what's something I've been kind of listening to in my own head and my own train of thought, right? So whether it be, you know, politics or wars or personal issues or school or whatever it may be, try to remember that we're all going through something, right? We all have something that we're dealing with. So show a little bit of compassion to your friends, your family, et cetera, et cetera. I know for myself, I'm practicing empathy and compassion for the people around me. And um, it's a journey that I've been on my entire life and I will continue to be on for my entire life. Kind of a different tone to the PVV, which I usually talk about, but I think it's important to say that, you know, 
treat others with love, care, and kindness as best you can. Obviously, there's different situations, but that's just on me right now. Like, that's, that's, that's what I'm feeling. So, anyways, enough of all that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to y'all later. Love y'all, PVV. Shout out to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.